Hi, I'm NJEA President Wendell Steinhauer. The New Jersey Education Association is committed to great public schools for every child. So we're proud to support Teacher Appreciation Week, a special series produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating New Jersey's talented and dedicated teachers. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge. Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, Berkeley College, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by Commerce Magazine. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We are here in Atlantic City, the 2013 New Jersey Education Association Convention. They've been coming here since 1905 here in Atlantic City, and we are here for the 20th anniversary of an extraordinary program, a uh, series that we have on public television is called Classroom Close-Up. They've won 11 Emmys. Why? Because they feature terrific educators and others in the classroom, real life stories. And one of those people behind one of those stories is Mike Ritzius. He is a science teacher, Camden County Technical School. How you doing, Mike? I'm good. How are you, Steve? Doing great, and this convention is important. You're here to talk about the role of technology in the classroom, right? That's right. Talk about, uh, by the way, we're out to see a video from Classroom Close-Up and it tells the story about technology in the classroom. How'd you even get into this in the first place? Uh, a lot of it was personal interest. You know, I, uh, I, I like playing with these tools and, uh, and they're kind of fun. And I, I want to, to first bring that interest into the classroom for the kids. And then, uh, and then as I use them, I, I get to see how effective they could be in, um, in communicating with students, extending the learning opportunities beyond the four walls of my little room. Um, and, uh, and really engaging them in ways that, um, that's relevant to them because the kids are using all these tools now outside the classroom. We have to teach them how to use them uh, responsibly. Changes everything. It does. Talking about it is one thing, seeing is another. This is a terrific clip from a terrific series, Classroom Close-Up. Presi gives you, gives you some different types of uh, interactions for working with with your students. Technology has really turned the classroom into a 24-hour learning environment. Tools like Moodle, uh, Google Apps, uh, they allow people to connect wherever, whenever, however they want. And, uh, and so the, the learning environment is wherever you are, so long as you have an internet connection. And we want to we teach our students how to operate in that environment, because that's where the world is now, too. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm just wondering what Moodle is and how it could help me. Moodle is a free online resource. As an instructor at North Warren, I can use it to provide my students with study guides, PowerPoints, access a website, or look at a Word document. I can also create all these different assignments that are hands-on for the students to do outside of the classroom or even in the classroom. It's also a good way to keep track of your students, uh, pre-assess them, pre-test them, uh, post-test them. It's an opportunity for them to see everything that they've done throughout the year as well because you can have it open to the whole year or you can have it only open to one specific unit or chapter that you're working with. I'm here today because I would like to share these tools with other teachers. I want them to experience the personal learning environment that I've experienced. Uh, I want them to be able to connect with other people. I want them to be able to connect with me. Uh, when, when that happens, uh, really expands your skill set. It helps you grow as an individual, it helps you grow as an educator. We do an activity called uh, photabulary, which is a combination of photography and vocabulary. We do it as a shared activity where um, students will say maybe only define two or three terms, and then we combine all those as one PDF that the whole class can share. So it's a, it's a really true 
collaborative experience. Today I'm presenting a workshop called Interactive Learning for Students with Special Needs. I'm going to be showing teachers how to take lessons that they do every day and incorporate them into Smart Notebook and to make it interactive for their students. It focuses all around using the smart board and how you can make your lessons interactive and interesting and engaging for students who have um, special needs. Have their morning writing activities. Technology really has changed everything and, uh, and I see a lot of teachers starting to take advantage of that and it's making our, our, uh, our learning environments more robust and more engaging. So there it is. Uh, Mike, let me ask you something. When we're talking about technology, talk about the impact technology can have, does have, on the student-teacher relationship. Uh, well, it allows us to, uh, to engage the students in a new way. You know, in, in the past, people had this vision of teacher in front of the classroom uh, doing this stand and deliver, and the students are, are paying attention to what the teacher's doing. Uh, and now... It's very passive. It's very passive. It's very passive. And now we can... We can flip that model um, where the students have the opportunity to do uh, a lot of the, the work around the material and the teacher becomes what we're calling a, a guide on the side or the, the meddler in the middle so the teacher gets in there and he sits with the individual students as they're working and, and helps them wrestle with these deeper concepts rather than just take notes and, uh, and then take the test. Is a teacher more, I'm thinking about this, as a teacher, by the way, we're here, you hear the sounds around us. This is the 2013 uh, New Jersey Education Association Convention, a lot of activities. It's early in the morning. It's going to be packed in just a, a few minutes here. Uh, let me ask you, is the teacher more of a facilitator when you have technology in the classroom moving things forward? Yes, yeah. It's the teacher's role to create um, opportunities for students to be challenged and to confront misconceptions and then as the students go through those challenges the teacher then helps them over the uh, the hurdles that they're going to hit. So students begin to interact with one another, there's lots of peer teaching that goes on uh, which which is more effective in helping students make meaning of the material that they're engaging with and, uh, and the teacher then um, is really just facilitating the learning as they go through. So the teacher is, uh, is, is just sitting next to students, asking them uh, maybe guiding questions to point them in the right direction, not really giving them the answer. Students are learning how to find that material themselves. But I want to be clear, Mike, for some people who are watching saying, so now the teacher's less important, less relevant because of technology in the classroom. That's just not true. No, no, not true. Actually, the teacher's more relevant now. Uh, in, in the age of uh, the internet, uh, information has become ubiquitous. Uh, prior to that, information was scarce, so the teacher was the source of information prior to, um, prior to, the, to Google. Um, now, information is everywhere, and now the teacher has to help students find what, uh, help students figure out how to determine what's relevant. Navigate? Navigate the, the, the materials that they're, that they're working with. Uh, they're, they're helping the students synthesize all these different pieces of information into something new. Uh, into something that they, that they can use and take action on or something along those lines. Curious about this. We're going to be winding up asking every teacher who joins us, every educator as part of the 20th anniversary of, of this great series, Classroom Close-Up, being celebrated here in Atlantic City, the 2013 uh, NJEA convention. Your passion for teaching comes from where? Oh, it's a personal thing. I really, I really enjoy engaging with people. I didn't start out as a teacher. I, uh, I'm an alternate root person. I, uh, I started out as a as a molecular biologist over at Thomas Jefferson University. And, uh, and I really enjoyed the science end of things, but the day-to-day the -day was not for me. I, I missed people. So uh, uh, teaching allowed me to um, still indulge in my passion for scientific process, um, but at the same time work with, with other people to... What do you uh, get from those kids? Things. Uh, the, the kids energize me every day, you know, their, their curiosity and their energy and uh, just, just their, 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 especially when they, when they overcome something, when they, when they, when they have a success in the classroom, uh, I, I just can't be more happy for them and, it's, and it really just makes the work more fulfilling. Before I let you out of here, what do you get from this convention? Because again, it is early in the morning, uh, this crowd's going to be packed behind us really soon. What do you get from this convention, the New Jersey Education Association convention? Uh, there's so many opportunities to learn, uh, to learn whatever you need. So the, the convention covers a wide range of topics from technology in the classroom to uh, effective pedagogical practice to, uh, to uh, just how to navigate the waters of the education system. Uh, and so there's something here for everyone. Uh, whatever, whatever your learning needs are, the NJEA convention is offering it.
Good stuff, Mike. Listen, I want to thank you on thank behalf you. of all of the parents out there with children in uh, public schools. Thank you for the work that you and all your colleagues do. Thank you. Right, good stuff. This is um, Steve Adubato. We're here in Atlantic City. By the way, there's not a big crowd behind. It's going to get bigger, but let's hear it for the NJEA convention, folks. And for Mike. We're going to be back in just a moment here on One on One, special edition of 2013 NJEA convention in Atlantic City. Be right back right after this. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Steve Adubato on location here at the 2013 New Jersey Education Association Convention in Atlantic City. They've been coming here to Atlantic City since 1905. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of a fabulous series called Classroom Close-Up. We celebrate uh, educators, others who make a huge difference in the classroom. Let me introduce our special guest today. She is Colleen Weiss Magasic. She is a biological sciences teacher at the Great West Milford Township High School. Good to see you. Hi. Is it not a fact, before we see this clip from Classroom Closer, you did not plan to go into teaching? No, I did not. Is it not a fact you wanted to be a doctor? I did. What happened? I did student teaching for something to fall back on. And? I loved it. I, I, <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but I it doesn't would, sound on, silly. on Fridays I couldn't wait for the weekend to be over so I could go back on Monday and do it again. And then I got really excited thinking they were actually going to pay me you to do this. You said that to your husband, didn't you? I did. I did. You said they pay me for this. And every once in a while when I complain that it's a miserable day, he says to me, why do you think they call it work? And I say, it's never been like work. This is my 24th year. 24. Yeah. And by the way, uh, two of your sisters who are here, of the eight siblings in your family, three yeah. are educators, right? Yes. Um, but let me do this. Set, let's set up this clip. This clip is about an initiative. Um, you won the HIP Award. The, the HIP Award, the full name uh, is Frederick the, L. HIP. Named after the former director uh, of yeah, the NJEA. Yeah, Dr. HIP, who's director of NJEA. It's the Excellence for Education grant. And it was created for innovative programs in education. And so our program is fifth graders working with high schoolers. And the fifth graders are growing trout in the classroom. And the high schoolers are taking them out in the field and doing stream studies with them. And then they come to the high school and they dissect fish with them. And then the high schoolers do some of their own research in, separate from that, independent can we see this? from that. Absolutely. You, well, we've seen it. You want to let everybody else see it? Absolutely. We can do that? Yeah. Want to introduce it? So here's our clip from Classroom Close-Up on Swimming Upstream. You're taking my job. Cut it out. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Today we're at Westbrook Park making science come alive. We have uh, fifth graders and high school students coming together. The high school kids are really great mentors to, to my fifth graders. Uh, we get together with them a couple times a year, and uh, they really get excited to come and see the, the high school students, and I think the high school students as well. It gives them kind of like a, a little buddy, a, a, you know, a little, little friend to come out here and show them how to do things and take the science at their level and bring it down to our level and show where we're going. Oh, there's a snail. Wow. Look at that one. We found two spiders and a worm. So when we arrive here, the students set up their stations. Um, we break up into groups. They introduce themselves to each other, and then they head down to the stream. We're doing some stream testing. We were here in the fall testing water temperature, water quality, um, pH level. They take a water sample back up to the pavilion, and then they look for macroinvertebrates. Once they get up to the pavilion, they start looking through, trying to find evidence of water quality, and different macroinvertebrates have different water quality requirements. So we're looking for the ones that are going to have a high water quality requirement because trout require good, clean, cold oxygen lead in water. Mr. Rennie always wanted trout in his classroom. And so I was aware of the Frederick L. Hip grant program. And when the application was available for us to do, I went ahead and wrote the grant. And we got funded. The first thing it paid for was Mr. Rennie's trout. 
I'm currently growing some trout in my classroom. We got them from eggs. And the idea is to release them into um, a trout stream in the spring. And the stream that we have selected is fed by the stream here at Westbrook Park. And we are looking to see what kind of water quality we'll be feeding into the stream to make sure that the trout that we will release will have success uh, in, in the wild. Some of the misnomers about teenagers are just so destroyed when you see them together with younger students. They're kind and they're generous and they're great role models and they just really look after the kids and work closely with them and it allows them to kind of revisit their own childhood and you know get excited about things that they used to be excited about. For the younger kids they have, they have these role models that they look up to. I think that it's really simple to get kids outside to do things. All you need to do is have a question that you want them to answer. They're kind of watching something and they're collecting data. It doesn't have to be complicated. You just have to do it. It's just put on your shoes and go outside. Kind of like my mom used to say. So let me get this straight. Now your mom used to say exactly what? Put on your shoes and go outside. Is that a lot of what it is? That's a lot of what it was when we were young. That's not a lot of what it is for kids today. And that's one of the reasons that I felt so passionate about, do, and feel so passionate about doing things that get students outside. Mm. They, don't, they can't tell a maple tree from an oak tree. They, can't, they, they don't understand the beauty of nature and how it works together. And so this project in particular, students go to the stream, they look at the water quality. As they're looking at the water quality, they're thinking about the trout. The high school students understand the relationship of the trees to the water and what that water quality means. The fifth graders understand what trout need because they're raising them, and then they come together and just have this great conversation. We have. Uh, boys who are 9 and 11 in the public schools in Montclair, but I also have a son who's much older. And I think to myself, how great it is when they're interacting. What's it like for you to see those high school kids with the fifth graders? What's that like? It's amazing. It's the first time that we had fifth graders come to the high school for dissection. There were 48 students dissection in the room of, of fish. Go ahead. There were 48 students in the room a bunch of adults and you could have heard a pin drop. Everybody was focused, the high school students are supportive, they direct the fifth graders but they don't do it for them, the fifth graders look up to them, it excites them about science, it's every stereotype about high school students is broken down right at that moment and you just see these really caring individuals who are knowledgeable, experts in their field and they're just excited to be that. How do you see your role in all that? I'm um, a facilitator. What does that mean? I set the stage for them to explore, and then I guide them through that exploration, but I don't tell them what they should find, and I don't tell them where they should go with that. Mm -hmm. And so I explain to them how to do the dissection, and then I help them as they're identifying the parts, mm -hmm. but I don't say to them, okay, do this and this and this, and then stop, because it's more exciting if it's their discovery. Question before I let you out of here. A series like Classroom Close-Up, celebrating its 20th anniversary, a great series that can be seen on our, our sister station, our partners at NJTV, the public television station in New Jersey we're proud to be a part of. How important is a series like that? Extremely. It, it just puts in the public eye how great education is, how excited teachers are, how many wonderful things are going on in the classroom. There's just so much positive energy in education, and unfortunately we don't always see that. But that's what we need to see. That's what we need to embrace. Kids are learning. Teachers are excited. We need to see that. And finally, a convention like this is great because? Rejuvenates you. It's like Does a little it? shot in the arm. Yeah, You've absolutely. You've been coming here for a few years now? Uh, just a couple. But still? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. If nothing else, you pick up on the enthusiasm and you go back and think, I can do this. Passion after all these years. Yeah. It's great. Listen, I want to thank you very much for joining us as part of the 20th anniversary of Classroom Close-Up. Your credit to your profession and uh, many students have benefited from it and those of us who are parents particularly appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm so thank glad you. you became a student teacher at the time. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks for Good having job. me. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato.
Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We are here at the 2013 New Jersey Education Association Convention. They've been coming to Atlantic City since 1905. They've been doing the conventions way back in the 1850s. And let me tell you, we are proud to introduce the uh, new, the incoming executive director of the NJEA, Ed Richardson. How are you doing? And congratulations. Thank you, Steve. And uh, thanks for being here at our convention. It's this really thrilling to have you here. Well, I'll tell you what, we are here, our colleagues at NJTV and Mike Schneider, my colleague and good friend, is going to be here a little bit later. But Great. you know a little bit about the connection between the NJEA and public broadcasting, do you not? Yes, I do. Um, my background at NJEA started in our communications division. I had a job where I was responsible for our partnerships with other organizations, including public, public television and public media, really. And uh, back in the days of NJN, uh, we had... Um, NJN, the precursor to, to NJTV. NJTV right. um, we had a relationship where we underwrote uh, some of their uh, public interest programming, uh, the news and sure. election coverage and so forth. And uh, about 19 years ago, we were looking to try and uh, expand that partnership. And at the time, we were producing a show called Classroom Close-Up New Jersey. The Classroom Close-Up series that celebrates the 20th anniversary as we speak, 11 Emmys later, go ahead. 11 Emmys later, one of those Emmys was won when the show was actually being aired on through paid programming. We were right. buying paid TV slots. So we were convinced that we were producing an excellent program that very few people were watching because it's very hard to promote that way. Sure. And uh, NJN partnered with us uh, through a co-production agreement and um, the rest is sort of history. I mean, our, our experience as a partner with public television has been um, nothing but stellar. As you said, 11 Emmys later, sure. um, the program uh, has a, a broad audience now, and it fulfills a really important mission, I think, in terms of educating the public about public education and the wonderful things going on in our schools. Curious about this, because our partnership at the Caucus Educational Corporation, together with our partners in public broadcasting and featuring Classroom Close-Up, is to tell stories, mm -hmm. is to try to get beyond all the noise sometimes uh, down in the state house and, and focus more on educators and people connected to education. That's a lot of what you're about. Yes. Um, you know, education tends to be boiled down as many public policy areas do to sort of sound bites. It's very hard to tell the story of public education correctly in a sound bite. And classroom close up and other uh, opportunities like that give us a chance to really dig in a little bit more and, and really explain um, how this works, how the business of education takes place and uh, you know what, what's successful. Speaking of uh, stories, <coughs> Ed, your story, when did you get into the education uh, field and um, why? Interesting story. I, uh, <coughs> I sort of backed into public education. Uh, my early background was in public relations and journalism. And uh, I uh, pursued and was hired by the, uh, in a position by the Department of Education in 1986. Did you work for Leo Plagholz? I did, yeah. Great commissioner. So you had that whole background on the government side. Yes. Um, in my seven years at the department, I had uh, moved into a number of different areas, including policy areas. I was a legislative liaison for about three years. Uh, was the uh, administrative policy uh, officer for a while. And I really started to become fascinated with, uh, with education policy and how policy translated into practice. And uh, did a very short stint as uh, Jim Florio's education advisor. And, um, uh, you know, no offense to, uh, to Governor Florio, but um, the, uh, the end of that administration was uh, really the beginning of a new career for me because otherwise I would never have pursued uh, a career with NJEA. You saw an opportunity to, Absolutely. Take, to look at education, to deal with education from a different uh, non-governmental perspective? And exactly. what does the NJEA offer in that way? Um, the NJEA gave me the practitioner's view. Um, I worked very hard at uh, being empathetic about the lives of our members and trying to see the world through, through um, their experiences. And it was very eye-opening. The thing that was most gratifying about coming to work here is how appreciative our members are of all the things that we do for them and do with them. Um, for example? Uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, back when school budget elections were a very big thing, we would try to go out and work with our affiliates to help them get their school budgets passed. And when you came from Trenton, with, you know, some, armed with some expertise, and some assistance, and you were there uh, working with them in the community to try and try and get their message out. Um, 
they, they, you know, they could not have been more appreciative. Just the fact that you, you know, you, you came from uh, from your office to wherever they were, and were on the ground, sort of advising them. And uh, you know, it was very gratifying coming from a government role where you know you right. rarely sort of got thanked. But um, uh, that was uh, that, that was just a really uh, sort of eye-opening change for me. Two questions before I let you out of here. By the way, we're here in Atlantic City. Our entire production team, the Caucus Educational Corporation, partnering with the. Uh, NJA, this is the uh, 2013 convention um, for the NJA. Been they've been coming down here since uh, 1905. Curious about this. Um, one question. Your predecessor, Vince Giordano, what do you want to say? Oh my gosh. Um, how much time do we have? What um, do you got? Vince is, uh, is just an incredible advocate, an incredible leader of uh, public education and NJA. He has been uh, the most stalwart mentor of mine. Um, I've been uh, his human resources manager since he became executive director, and um, he has taught me so much. Uh, I don't know that, there, that, that there's any way of completely preparing for the job that I'm about to take, mm -hmm. but if, uh, if you can be prepared, he's, he and Rich Gray have both uh, really uh, done their utmost to, uh, to leave the organization in, in good hands and help me move into this uh, challenging role. And finally, while it's a job you cannot prepare for, Ed, if you were to say, in this role as uh, the new executive director of this organization that's, uh, let's just say, very engaged and involved in the most challenging educational issues that this state faces, top priority 2014 is? Um, I think to get through what I'm often described as the policy fatigue that our members are experiencing. Fatigue? Yeah, um, an awful lot coming down from the state all at the same time. New evaluation requirements, uh, core curriculum content standards, uh, the park assessments, and uh, they feel very much under the gun and uh, in many cases feel like the implementation of those policies is not being undertaken correctly. So that's our challenge right now is advocating for them where things are occurring that should not be occurring, but also providing assistance to them to help them get it right. Um, you, you'll hear from many number of people at this uh, convention about student growth objectives, because that was the first wave of evaluation. We conducted almost 100 workshops for our members on how to construct student growth objectives properly. So, you know, a lot of people like to view us as, you know, the hardcore union, we're only out there fighting for our members' rights, and the, they ignore the other side of it, which is that we are out there assisting our members to try to make the best of, of uh, the policies that are coming down from Trenton. I want to congratulate you. We Thank know you. you have a daunting challenge ahead of you, and we look forward to many interviews and public broadcasting uh, with you down the road. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge, Choose New Jersey, NJIT, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, Berkeley College, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.